morning, everyone. Thank you for coming here. We are the Korean. Here we have Bakiza from Burkina Faso, Yoni from South Korea, Rina, Olivia, uh, Steven, and me we are from China. So let's start. Uh, have, you, have you ever noticed there is a group of people? They are not real designers. They could be high school students. They could be a single mother. They could even be a 60-year-old grandpa. But they have a really talent in design, and they have really good pattern designs and ideas in their hands. But they have no consciousness where they are not capable to commercialize their designs. Also, no, not yet. Also, there is another group of people. Let's say in the U.S., in New York, people they really want to collect some good clothing with good great patterns, creative designs in it. But sometimes, you know, it's really hard to find the really good ones, really dis uh, distinguished and beloved ones. So how could it happen? Those two groups of people, they have no approach to each other. That's why we are here. So we are going to build a bridge between them. We are going to, uh, uh, based on our uh, website on the one hand, we are going to collect uh, designs from the, those designers and we are going to present them on our website. On the other hand, we can uh, we, we will have some uh, crowdfunding activities uh, for the, our customers to say, to choose if the number of the uh, customers who are willing to buy designs up to the, our standards. So we are going to get them produced and delivered. Um, after we uh, came up with this idea, we did some work on it. And we did our shop interviews, about 40 shops and uh, 16 salesmen in New York City, and eight Chinese handicrafts in uh, Chinatown, and uh, six local shops. And this is our design interview. We tried to interview some designers from ch China and Africa to um, know their needs about uh, pattern design. And we found that they, uh, they want to get uh, new distributions and also commercialize their design. And this is our website for a crowdfunding page. Our uh, model for a crowdfunding is um, the first step, if you like our design for this pattern and you want to print it in t-shirt or uh, hats or something else, the first step you just need to invest in it one dollar. And the total price for a t-shirt may be fifty dollars, but the first step you just need to uh, invest one dollar. And then we will create a special page for you and you can spread it in social networks to uh, ask your friends to invest it too if they like it. And um, at least, for example, uh, there are 50 people investing in this um, product and then we'll produce it. And the, the final step that you need to pay the um, $40 left. And we will have two benefits for this model. The first benefit is if it is successful, we will get $50 for a t-shirt, right? And if it's not uh, successful, we have 50 days to run this money. Um, yes. And this is about our product. We can print it on hats, on t-shirts, on bags. And this is our customer <coughs> interview on the street. Actually, we uh, did a lot, a lot of research. Uh, we searched the internet and a lot of the database to do the research uh, related to our business. Uh, uh, the first part is about the market and the customer. Uh, we did the uh, market analysis. Uh, and we find that <coughs> uh, our business has great market potential, actually. Uh, and then we, sh we, we should decide the operation model online or offline. Uh, as you can see in the map, uh, we know that uh, compared with the offline shop, online shop is a better uh, choice for us. So in the future, we will pay more attention uh, on the uh, online shop. And then we also uh, analyze the customer behavior. As you can see uh, in this map, we should focus on these three. Uh, these three uh, customers as our target uh, customer groups. Uh, and also, for our pricing, uh, we should focus on about uh, 100 to uh, $200 per unit for our product. Yeah, as you can see here. 
and then we also uh, searched the fashion trends. Uh, as you can see, for male and for uh, female, they love the different colors, patterns, and uh, uh, fabrics. Uh, we think that we can use this kind of data to instruct our pattern design in the future. And for the competition, uh, because as you know, uh, it is a very fierce uh, market uh, in the pattern design uh, market, uh, but we have our own features. Uh, we have a strong networking with designers in, Af uh, in Africa and uh, in China. And uh, we will uh, add uh, traditional Chinese and African uh, characteristics into our, our own design. And we will also use crowdfunding to let customers uh, to vote out the most favorite design, and and our uh, crowdfunding is very innovative. And uh, the second part, we search the rules and the regulations uh, related to our business. Uh, uh, it is about importing e-commerce and online payment and uh, online crowdfunding, uh, especially the online payment. It is very different uh, from our payment system in, uh, in China. Uh, actually, in the future, we will pay more attention to uh, the online payment. Uh, we will search more details about these parts. Yeah. Yes. Now let's talk about the resources. Uh, first of all, we will, uh, um, uh, um, we will integrate association and foundation, uh, mainly in the American Craft Council, and we will also participate in the best uh, craft fair, like uh, the Brooklyn uh, uh, Craft Fair that is run. Uh, uh, that will that will be run next uh, up in November in the 12th, and then uh, we will oops, no. yeah. Then we will also um, uh, ask for financial resources. So we will also go through a uh, crowd crowdfunding, like uh, my friend not, uh, or, already mentioned. We will um, we will go on crowdsourcing fund fundraising and fundraising our uh, article and talks. There you can uh, uh, display your partner and people will vote for it. Uh, and there are people who are doing at the moment and is working successfully, which means that uh, we can also integrate the association. And then here is our main competitor, like Michael, the American craftsman, and uh, American gift uh, gift shop. They are doing very. They are like the competition is very fr is fierce at the moment, and uh, they are well known, and uh, they are creative, and we are very young. And then we will uh, our uh, inspiration we will take from the museum, like the MoMA, the modern museum of modern art, the Metropolitan Museum, and uh, the Museum of Every Trade and Craft. Now, let us talk about our video. Yeah. Uh. Uh, actually, the entrepreneur we interviewed uh, is a bit Vietnamese. Uh, he's a CEO of a technology company. You know, as we are online platform, uh, so we interview someone who's also launching an online platform, and we learn a lot about how to launch a marketing campaign here. Yeah, 
in real estate. But uh, I mean, I always have a dream of uh, developing, uh, you know, like a, an app. Inspiration in the beginning was actually uh, we want to make a uh, classify app. That's how we start out with the idea. Then we feel like uh, you know that that side is such a diverse. I mean, it's so much that we can handle. So we had, we narrow it down. So we tackle on like marketplace at the moment right now. Like you said, we did research on the marketplace for the Asian side, and they are missing this part in the Asian community side. So we, we felt like we have the upper hand right now for that. So we, we can build that first, and then later on we can expand to a lot more different fields. A lot of times it's actually in the social media side, marketing. Yeah, social media. And then if you're tagging, uh, for instance, like uh, Chinese people, then you should use a lot of WeChat. The most unexpected for me is uh, to fire somebody. I guess you know, that's the hardest thing. You know, to build a team, you have to be connected with yourself. You need that expertise in that field. You know, and you trust that other person to do that. You gotta really know your your, your budget. I mean, the hardest thing is is is, is your budget. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, uh, what I advise them to do is, like I said, set a goal and um, focus on the goal that they are wanting to achieve. Because there's so many people can give you a different opinion all the time, you know? And don't let negativities, you know, play in parts of what you are building, you know? You should, uh, you know, set a goal for yourself and, uh, Focus on that, that goal and try to take it. Doesn't matter what other people say, just focus on that goal. No problem. Okay, so. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. So now I can share some of our feelings and our reflections about the whole year. Uh, my name is Si yeah, I'm from Zhejiang University. Actually, last year when we came to Yam Leo, it's my, it was my first time to go abroad, mm -hmm. which really means something to me. And during this one year, I learned a lot and I also grew up a lot. What I learned most in this period of time is never wait for the perfect opportunities because there won't be a perfect opportunity. You should just start with what you already have, just go out to try and you fail and try again. If you just want to wait, then it's more likely to lose than to get something. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Olivia, and uh, I joined this program last year, and uh, um, inspired by my family members. So uh, being an entrepreneur or starting my own business is my dream. And I learned a lot from this program, and also I traveled a lot. And um, the most important thing for me is I um, decided to focus on game industry. Uh, I will start my career in um, computer game industry first, and uh, then in the future, I think it's not so far away, I'm going to launch my uh, own game studio, if I'm lucky enough. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Wei Yan Chao, and you can call me Steve. And I think most of uh, my classmates have known that before I took part in this program, I have uh, worked in Myanmar for almost five years. Actually, I experienced uh, parts of the reform in Myanmar, and I found that there are a lot of opportunities in the future, uh, especially for the uh, business, uh, because the business environment is uh, uh, more and more uh, open uh, there. And uh, I have uh, studied in Europe, in China, and in America, but in the future, uh, maybe I will uh, establish uh, my own startup in Southeast Asia. Uh, and I have learned a lot from this uh, program, uh, and I think it is very, very useful for me, for my uh, future career. Yeah. Uh, my name is Balkisa Zongo, I'm from Burkina Faso in West Africa. Every time I say, I told someone I'm from Burkina Faso, they're like, very sad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a small country. Um, before I, I never thought I would be accepting the program first uh, when I finished my bachelor degree. I applied and I had the interview with Professor Moore and the interview went well and I got into the program. And I never regret it. 
because I got to meet all the fantastic and intelligent people here. I got to meet fantastic guests and professors who share their knowledge with me. In France, I learned what entrepreneurship really is. In China, I learned about strategy. And here in the US, I learned how to take the next, the first step with Professor Davis. So I'm interested in energy renewable and warehouses. Anyone interested in that can contact me. Hello, everyone. I'm Yijuo. Uh, and actually, for me, during this whole year, I really learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot from my professors and also from my classmates. Uh, when, at the beginning of this program, when we were in France, uh, actually I have been an entrepreneur for more than two years. Uh, so uh, I think I know a lot about how to be an entrepreneur and how the life of entrepreneur should be. But at the time, I came to realize I don't know how to have a true life and in France, I learned it. I really enjoyed the time uh, <laughs> like how to have fun and uh, how to uh, try a lot, something like that. And I came to realize how big this world is. And as an entrepreneur, uh, you shouldn't just limit yourself in your career or something like that. You should also care about like your families, your friends, and people you should care about. Uh, so that's the first thing I learned from this program. And the second thing uh, is when I came back to China. Uh, actually, that's also with the help of my foreign friends. Uh, you know, because before this, I don't know how China is in the perspective of the others. I still remember that uh, one time when we were talking outside, Anna said, uh, come on, it's China, so you can buy something at even a late time. So I came to realize that uh, maybe China is really developing a fast speed. Uh, and uh, I came to realize there are many things we ignored before. So um, I learned a lot. And the third thing is in New York. Uh, actually here, I came to uh, talk with many people who are living here. Uh, and I realized they are really ambitious. And they are always taking actions for their goals. Uh, actually, I am inspired by the ambitious. Uh, I started to uh, remember when I was a young girl who just came to the college, I was very encouraged. But after four years, uh, I became mature, but I lack encouragement. So now I think I'm prepared to be a real entrepreneur. Uh, I mean, sometimes entrepreneur is not the person who started their own business. Uh, I think entrepreneur is a big word. It means uh, people who uh, have the courage to do uh, things that always came with ambiguity and risks. So now I think I'm prepared for it. Just take action. Korea and actually I started a uh, university in China without knowing like perfectly speaking Chinese and um, this is like my bachelor degrees is English so it's not related to business so I just and I just started this so I had very difficult time through the year but I learned a lot like during the whole year and like this guy, this guy is the Brian, who's CEO of the Sosokan. He's also like just came to United States and started his own like business with Chinese people. If it's not his own mother tongue, so I think like challenging in your life is very important, and that's what I learned. <laughs> 